Hello, my name is Marco Mara, and I'm a teacher and I want to give you a quick introduction to Microsoft Small Basic, particularly as it relates to using with students. As you can see on the screen here, you can download it off the internet at smallbasic.com. It's got heaps of resources. It does look a bit old school 90s, and the program actually looks much the same, but in actual fact it's really powerful and I think it's a really good way to take a major step in your students' develop development as programmers. One of the really good things that comes with it is this PDF, which is 70 odd pages long. It's a bit plain to look at, but it's quite a comprehensive guide to the basic functions. I've actually broken them up task by task for my students um, and created short videos for them, but I find that most students are actually pretty good at getting through this. So our first program. Now, I'm not going to copy and paste it, although I could, but here I am in the compiler. So text window, I've written test. Now normally that would have just slipped by, but here it actually predicts what you want, and there I have the exact code. So now it tells me what can go next. So I'm going to use right line. Now, over on the right hand side, it's telling me text window, right line, brackets, data. Now, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. You actually, if you want um, literal text, um, you actually have to put it in inverted commas. Hello everyone, full stop and close. I'm actually going to leave that last bracket off deliberately because I want to show you what happens when I try and run it. I can hit F5 or I can hit the run button. Now, it brings up an error. So it says 1, 22, encountered unexpected end of line passing method call. The error messages are not very friendly, but they will tell you what line you're on, and as you write bigger and bigger programs, that's really helpful. Sometimes you can make sense of what they mean, and of course you can Google them. So, I fix up the code and I run it, and there is my very first program. Hello everyone. So, but you know what, that's, that's a very basic level of programming, so let's move on to something a bit more complicated. I copied this one straight out of the um, PDF that I showed you a minute ago. Text window right, enter temperature in Fahrenheit. Then it says that the variable Fahrenheit, F-A-H-R, is going to equal the number that it reads from the window. And you'll see this in practice in a minute. Then it does a calculation to calculate the variable Celsius, which is 5 times Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 9. And finally it's going to write again that temperature in Celsius is and that variable. So we'll run that. Ah, oh, there you go. The variable Celsius is used, but its value is not assigned. There you go. Have you spelt it correctly? No, in fact, I have not. So if we go back and look, as I start to type it, it's actually going to bring it up there as the variable that I've defined before. So I've messed that up. So that's good. It even remembers the variables you've created. So now let's run it. Ah, beautiful. Enter temperature in Fahrenheit. I'm going to pick 100 degrees. Temperature in Celsius is 37.7, repeating, and it's rounding at the end, of course. So what I'm going to do, and this is what I encourage my students to do, is now tweak this code. So they're putting out 37.7. That's a bit, it's, it's accurate, but it's a bit ugly. So as a programmer, I'm going to make a decision to round down. Actually, you know what, I might round up. So I jump over to Google, and I say, small basic rounding numbers, and as chance should have it, the first result takes me back to the small basic site. So ceiling is, gets an integer, I always say that number wrong, Pro probably integer, I don't know, it's one of the two. Um, so I happen to know that that number rounded up in that case, so I'm going to use that particular um, bit of code. So here's what I'm going to. So I'm going to create a new variable called rounded Celsius and I'm going to make it equal Celsius, and there you see it comes up for me so that I don't spell it wrong this time, actually. And then I, post in, I paste in that code, and in place of number, I'm going to put Celsius. And again, it helps me get that right. And so down here, instead of displaying Celsius, I'm going to display rounded Celsius, which is down there on the... Hmm, hang on. You know what? Ah, oh, I know what I did wrong. Rounded. There it is. So that's correct. Now I'm going to run it again. So, enter temperature in Fahrenheit, 100, is 38. Now, obviously I've distorted it a bit, but that's just to show you what you can do with this program. It's a very good one for giving students, a, a very good way of giving students a program and getting them to tweak it a bit to enhance it. So, we'll just end that program, and I want to show you a couple of other things that I've done. Because it isn't just, it isn't just a glorified calculator. This program here is using a function called turtle. 
So what I can do with turtle is I'll actually just show you the very basics of it. Turtle, um, TR turtle, there we go. Um, show. There we go. Now if I run that program, it will just plonk a turtle on the screen. And I can move that turtle around. And what I'm actually using it for with my class is we're simulating our robot programming to test hypotheses about how we can control a robot. So this next program is a robot, the turtle, that can only see whether it's getting closer or further away from a beacon. And there's a line in between it, which I've programmed it to draw, and it's going to turn, and then it's going to calculate whether it's getting closer to the beacon or further away from the beacon, and then it's going to turn a number of degrees that I'm going to specify as the user. And this lets students generate and test an hypothesis. So, what will the ideal angle be for the turtle to start turning? I'm going to say 90, just because that feels intuitively right to me. It's going to move 10 pixels before it recalculates and changes direction. And I want to repeat the test five times. So off we go. So what we can do is actually test our maths. And there we go. We actually got our turtle home quite quickly that time. Uh, and over in this window, I'm actually seeing the distance where, as it calculates. And again, I've rounded that. And I'm doing a measure with a thing called an array to work out what the average distance is to get there and the efficiency. So as you can see at the end of my program, it got there in 1.81. So it travelled 181 pixels for every 100 that it actually would have travelled if it had gone in a straight line. But as a way of testing your thinking and of prototyping something, that's extremely powerful. And I'll show you what I think is even more powerful. I'll show you number four. Number four I did with the help of a maths teacher called Kelly Clithrow because it was, I was out of my depths a bit on the maths. And this time, what we're actually doing is starting at our random spot, moving out, taking another measurement, how far we are from the beacon, and then we're using maths to work out what the angle is that we need to turn. Now this code isn't perfect yet, so you'll see it does a little bit of trial and error at the start to get its, um, to get its position right, but it is much more efficient than the 181 that we just saw. So let's repeat this five times. We'll have, I've built in um, changing the turtle speed on this one. And I didn't tell it the angle here, it's calculating it. So look at that. Very rapidly it got home. Quick correction. There you go. 1.10. Pretty good. 1.03. Really long ones are efficient actually because once it's on track, 1.03. Once it's on track, it's right. So as you can see, both you and the students can see it mathematically represented. Well, that one was interesting. It went a bit wonky there but average efficiency of 1.06. What's useful about that is that it's only a slightly more elegant program, but it's a way of testing a much more elegant solution for the robot. So there are all sorts of things you can do with Small Basic, and I really would encourage you to give it a serious look.